Hi there, in an earlier video I showed you this transformer on the left, which could, when all secondary windings were connected in series, muster about 100 volts AC and thus act as sort of an isolation transformer for things that work from 90 volts upwards. But not everything has such a universal power supply. So I decided to replace it with a real dedicated isolation transformer that works up to 250 volts and has the proper sockets, wiring and, although not really necessary, analog instruments for a change. The opportunity came when I spotted this eBay listing from a seller Mark YO73 selling a proper isolation transformer from Schneider. It has the part number ABL6TS25U and at 50 pounds it's less than half the price of exactly the same transformer at RS components. A real bargain. Okay, at 250 volt ampere capacity it isn't quite as powerful as the Variac, but I'm only using it to test electronics, not to run heaters or power tools, so for me that's good enough. When it arrived I examined it carefully just in case the price was too good, but it came in the proper box and looked exactly like it should on the RS website and apart from a bit of paint missing on the corners of the mounting bracket it looked brand new. The real question is of course whether it isolates as it should and for that I ran some tests. I hooked up this cheap isolation tester. One pole went to the shortened secondary on the left and the other one to the shortened primary on the right. Apologies for the blurry image but let me know if you would be interested in a review of that instrument. I tested the isolation between primary and secondary with 250 volts, 500 volts and 1000 volts DC and found no problem. I then tested the isolation of the secondary winding against the transformer's earth terminal using all three voltages and then repeated the test with the primary winding, again finding no issues which means the transformer is good to go. The schematic is rather simple but I added a few bells and whistles that may be not immediately obvious. In principle we have the transformer here with its primary connected via an illuminated double pole switch to mains. In the UK that means there's a fuse in the mains plug which I selected to be 3 amps. I would recommend adding a fuse separately if you are in any other country. The transformer offers several options for the primary. I decided to use the standard 0 and 230 volt taps for a ratio of 1 to 1 to the secondary which goes via a volt and ammeter to a UK main socket and also through shrouded banana sockets. It is important for your safety to use shrouded sockets here to prevent an accidental touch. Switch S2A allows to disconnect mains earth from the output, making it floating. This is the main purpose of the isolation transformer, but it's a dangerous setting so you need to know what you're doing and what the consequences could be. As a reminder for myself, I use a second set of contacts on that switch to illuminate two neon lights showing which setting is currently used. As it's drawn, S2 is in a floating position and the red indicator would be lit. It goes without saying that you should occasionally check that S2 is still working correctly rather than blindly relying on it. This can be easily done from the outside testing the output earth for continuity against normal earth. The voltage and current meters are more an indulgence and not necessary. I decided to use them because I had them already lying around gathering dust. Another not really needed thing is the breaker F2. This is a resettable thermal fuse set to 1 amp to prevent overheating. Since the transformer is rated for 250 volt ampere, it should be able to handle 1 amp continuously at full mains, but better safe and besides at 1.5 amps it will still take something like 2 minutes before the breaker triggers. This build uses a 3 amp ammeter which allows for a little bit of overcurrent without damaging the meter. If you can get a 2 amp meter it may be better because you can read smaller currents. The 3 amp meter hardly ever moves with normal loads. Even at just 250 volt ampere the transformer is already quite large and nice enclosures able to house it are rather expensive. 
so I decided that looks aren't so important and use this large but inexpensive plastic junction box as an enclosure instead. As big as that enclosure is, the transformer alone already fills quite a bit of it. The transformer is not just large but also heavy and therefore I decided to reinforce the plastic wall that will become the floor and hold the transformer. In the back you can already see the IEC C13 socket for the mains input and my added ventilation holes. Since it is going to be tricky to get to the primary terminals once the transformer is mounted, I decided to pre-wire all these hard to reach points, selecting the 0 and 230 volt tabs to get a 1 to 1 ratio with the secondary. The transformer is mounted and I can now move on to the front of the enclosure. These are all the components that go on the front, arranged in roughly the position they will be in. While one of the arrangement criteria was aesthetics, the most important factor was the depth needed by the component and whether there was sufficient clearance from the transformer behind. By the way, originally I did not have a blue shrouded 4mm socket and replaced one of the yellow ones later. One advantage of the chosen enclosure is that it's plastic and the front is a simple lid which makes cutting the holes a fairly simple process even for me. The components are in and what is left is to wire them up. The lone red lug you see at one of the ammeter terminals was just a trial fit to test the needed diameter. The wiring is complete and for the secondary side all that is needed is to connect a live neutron and earth wire to the transformer terminals. On the left you see the main switch for the primary side has no wires yet because if you recall these wires have already been prepared as part of the transformer installation. There are two changes since this was taken. First the metal part of S2 the switch on top is now connected permanently to mains ground which is safer and convenient as you will see. The other change is that the metal screws holding the UK mains power socket have been replaced by plastic ones. That way, all metal parts that can be touched from the outside are either grounded or eliminated. This is the fully wired up unit. The three cables you just saw are connected to the secondary of the transformer and earth, while the previously prepared cables for the primary are plugged into the rear of the power switch. Testing the isolation transformer is not very exciting. I have two 60 watt incandescent light bulbs plugged into the output to see at least some movement on the ammeter. As you'd expect, nothing changes when switching to floating, at least not when using simple light bulbs. Here's one way of testing the working of S2 once the unit is off, using a multimeter in continuity mode, connecting one lead to the earth terminal and the other lead to a normal earth. In this case, I use the metal part of the switch itself. In grounded mode, there should be continuity, but in floating mode, of course not. And while doing this, it's worthwhile checking that the earth terminal is still permanently connected to the power socket ground. Unfortunately, as with all transformers, there is a significant capacitive coupling between the primary and secondary, which we can use as another way of testing the ground switch S2. In this case, the multimeter must be set to AC volts. And the power must be turned on. It's a bit dark to see the meter, let me turn the backlight on. With one lead in the ground terminal and the switch set to floating, you will measure some stray voltage when touching the proper ground with the other lead, or in this case the metal of the switch, about 5 volts AC. This goes to zero if the switch is set to grounded and working properly. Let me do it again. Floating, some non-zero voltage, for example 5 volts, grounded. Zero. The last thing I can think of to show on this isolation transformer is testing the fuse. For this, the multimeter is in series with the analog one, so both should read the same current. A 12 volt, 25 watt car light bulb is connected to the output. If I raise the voltage with the variac to about 10 volts, the bulb lights up and draws about 1.5 amps. The 10 volts is not enough to register on the analog voltmeter. 
about 12 seconds after starting the test, I remember to start the timer. At 1 minute and 22, the breaker pops and you can see the white ring. Considering the delay in starting, it took slightly more than 1 minute and 30 seconds. After letting things cool down a bit, all you need to do to reset is press the breaker back in. The reason that the current starts flowing is because the lowest voltage on my barrack is 4 volts, not 0. Well, that's it for this build. I hope you found it interesting. If you follow along, please remember that you do at your own risk and you must be familiar with mains wiring. If you like this video, consider subscribing to see more and maybe becoming a Patreon, link in the description. As a Patreon you get early access to videos, a blog and other exclusive content. Thanks for watching.